dangerous in your absence. You're going to have to work that flabby body harder than ever if you want to stay alive. First things first, we're going to get you sobered up. Bourbon? Yes, thank you. Oh, Mega. I know I've been a, a big old bitch lately, but I got a lot on my plate, you know. As you know, the World Peace Gala in Geneva is this week. It is the coming out party for the new Democratic Republic of Old Socialist Prussian Slavisky. Uh, an American alliance with them would really just fuck the Russians. That is poisoned. Anyway, the prince of the new democratic revolt... <laughs> fuck it. He's an inexperienced, inbred, dumbo doofus, and all the great leaders feel the same way. <laughs> that doesn't leave this room. Anyway, uh, the Russian dignitary and I will be bowing at this fickle fuck's feet until he decides on a special relationship. And, well, thanks to your colossal fuck-up, the Russians have the upper hand. Repeat back to me everything I just said. Dear Papa, I am writing to inquire about my Hogsmeade permission form. I sent it to you on the very first day of school, and I am anxiously awaiting its return with your signature on it. But, but, but don't rush, Daddy. Missing out on trips like this allows me more time to write letters to you. Yes, things at Hogwarts are going quite swimmingly. I'm the most popular boy at school, but even Harry Potter likes me. I'm also the darling of every classroom and the favorite of every professor who has any sense. Oh, oh, most importantly, I have mastered the use of the potty. Yes, yes, I admit I was a late bloomer, but you can imagine my pride as I strolled into Charm's class and said, Oh, hello, gents. Professor Flitwick, sorry for my tardiness. I was just learning how to use the potty. <laughs> How the children laughed with me in celebration. <laughs> <laughs> I like making people laugh. I also like the potty. I know you haven't done so all year, but you can feel free to write me any time. Hugs and butterfly kisses. Your Draco. Oh, P.S. Tell Mama to bugger off. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not babies or nuts. See, we let those squirrel bastards get fat off nuts while we hang back, watching and waiting. And then, just when Mr. Squirrel thinks he's safe and he's thinking to himself, I've had enough nuts for today. Better take the rest home to my family. Uh, don't give him a family. Okay, he's saying, um, I just got done murdering my family. Ew, oh, I hate him. Yes, time to celebrate their deaths with a nut. Then, before he knows what's happening, we jump out and eat him. Although I, I haven't figured out yet how to make him dead so we can eat him, but still, pretty good idea, right? I mean, all the successful animals do it. Think about Snarl. See, oh, no. We do not think about Snarl. We do not want to be like him. No. What? I said, no. You know, Jamila, I used to look up to you. Yeah, I thought, oh, man, she's got great clothes. She's got great hair. Man, she's got it together. She's the leader of the tribe. I wanted everything you had, and for you to have nothing. So you didn't look up to me, you envied me? Yeah, that's right. But not anymore. No, because see, now I see what you're really like. You ban everything you can't control, and do you know why? Um, 
it's because you're a, a scared little baby. Oh. Oh. And do you know what we do to babies in this tribe? Uh-oh, we eat them. <laughs> wow, Dad, you're really in trouble with Mom. <laughs> Can I tell you something about myself? I hate being in trouble. As a kid, that is my number one fear. You know how many times I thought about just not coming back to the wagon because I didn't want to get in trouble for something? I lost a shoe two months ago. I didn't say anything about it. No one asked me, so I'm walking around with one shoe. If someone were to ask me, where's your shoe? I'd say, I don't know. Because at this point, I honestly don't. I mean, I remember where it was when I threw it off the wagon, but I mean, it bounced for a little bit, and I kind of put my hand out and pointed at it, but no one said anything, so I just put my hand down and forgot about it, man. All I know is that shoe bounced pretty good. Well, goodbye, Dad. I do not love you more than Mom, but I certainly feared you less. Goodbye, Crabble. Oh, and Dad, Mom may have thrown you off the proverbial wagon, but sometimes when you throw things off the wagon, they bounce back on. Maybe that'll happen to you, Dad. Maybe that'll happen to you. Uh, why did I come back here? To, uh, drink? <laughs> back to Hatcherfield. I spent the first 18 years of my life trying to get out of this place. Yeah. Should have just stayed in Guatemala. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they've got volcanoes and cutamundis everywhere, but at What's least... What's a cutamundi? Oh, it's like a little raccoon thing. Now they get into shit, people hate them, but at least they don't sing and dance. So is that what drove you back to Hatchet Field? Kudamundis <laughs> up in your shit? No, no, it was uh, my sister, Jane. She was the good one. Yeah, she had this um, Lisa Frank binder when she was little where she mapped out her entire life and I <laughs> swear to God, she stuck to it, bullet point by bullet point. It was like, job, husband, house, kid. And you know, when one sister's so on top of her game, it kind of demands that the other one be a total fuck up, right? What is yin without yang? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, man, she was off doing life and I was doing something else. Backpacking, mostly. And she would call me and you know invite me home for the big events, you know, like weddings, baby showers. And I'd always say, oh, sorry, I'll catch the next one. But um, then when I got the invitation to her funeral, I was like, oh, there won't be a next one. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, you didn't crash into her car. Anyway, uh, it's weird growing up in someone else's shadow because then when they're gone, the light shines on your life for the first time, and it does not look good. So there I was, 30, with no roots anywhere except Hatchet Field. So I thought, well, um, I'm gonna make something of myself, you know, and do something my sister would be proud of, enroll in community college, study botany. I'm gonna start a pot farm. <laughs> oh. Did your sister smoke a lot of pot? No, but weed's the future. It's gonna be legal nationwide soon, bet you any money. <laughs> Not that it matters anymore. Man, my whole life, my one goal was to avoid dying in Hatchetfield. And here we are. Hey, it could be worse. You could be dying in Clivesdale. <laughs> Fuck Clivesdale. Fuck him. <laughs> oh, hey, what are you doing, mate? Oh, I, just go, I, let go of oh, it. Oh, okay. You know what? Why don't you just go on ahead without me this time? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm feeling a bit like a wet blanket nowadays. Hey, mira me. <laughs> oh! No, escucha me! You are the toughest son of a bitch I ever met in my life. Do you remember? 
when we met at my quinceanera. And you saved me from those killer robots who tried to string me up like a piñata and smash me open so they could eat my guts. I destroyed them. Yeah, that was tough. Or well, that time that those bullies were picking on me because I was so little and I liked to read. And I got on your back and we chased them into the dumpster. And they looked like a bunch of chillies. That was tough. At well, that time... You taught me calculus. <laughs> calculus was tough! Yeah, I, I know it has, I know, but I, that was before my injury. That was before the robot. No, no. It's been two years since your injury, and it's time to move on. You taught me something once, that no matter how hard you get knocked down, you always got to get back up. So now it's short term. Get back up. Jamila says she's all about discovery, but she won't even try my ideas. Instead, she's got us figuring out all this useless shit. It's like, I don't care where the sun goes at night. He's an asshole. <laughs> I have a dream, Kiri, of a future where no one knows how anything works and nobody wants to. Because in this future, everything is abundant. Food, leisure time, you name it. And so, when someone says to you, Hey, yo, fuck you, you don't know what you're talking about. You can just say, No, fuck you. You don't know what you're talking about. And the beauty will be that neither of you know what you're talking about. And until that happy day, when we can be mm, so lazy... I will work as hard as I possibly can to get us there because that, my friend, is the spirit of human ingenuity. I mean, progress doesn't come from the desire to understand, like Jamila says. No. No, it comes from the need to be lazy. <laughs> yep, that's my dream. All right, everybody, it's payback time. Wait, Scraggs. <sighs> What is happening? It's like my brain is activated. Esther? Uh-oh. Here come the neurons. Here we go! <laughs> As I first mentioned in the bar, before anyone else, I might add, I knew from the moment Gwen produced that fake knife that we were dealing with a copycat criminal. If my addled brain serves me correctly, which it always does, the demonic apostle from our youth prided himself on using real sacrificial relics of the occult. He would have never used a prop knife in lieu of a real one, not to mention the cheap quality and clear watermark made in China on the handle of the instrument was a dead giveaway that these were produced and distributed en masse from some global shipping company. But that could have been a red herring, right? Wrong. Because simultaneously, we found our second clue. The Salva Squad tank top from the gym. It was soaked with the culprit's sweat, and judging from the lifting bench under which it was crammed, the wearer had recently been working out. Specifically, the biceps, no more than 60 pounds, judging from the weight they left on the machine. Hmm, very curious. Seems like our culprit's a lot weaker than we've been led to believe. Which le leads me to our suspects. The staff of the Mayberry Gardens Motel and Spa. Now, the old ballet Marvin couldn't have done it. He's behind in his dialysis. Without healthy kidneys, we're not the energy to lift weights. He's not attempting to hide behind strength. Now, Cole the bellhop wouldn't have been able to keep his fat trap closed if he was the killer. So for a while, I thought all signs pointed to Camille. The motive was clear. Maybe she was trying to scare people away so she were closed on the property to clear ten seven bankruptcy. She's behind her mortgage payments. Not to mention, she misidentified the shape of the blood symbol and type of blood used in the sauna. Furthermore, I could absolutely see her snatching Keith away from Gwen after that full-blown flark fest they've been putting on. You bitch! Ooh. <laughs> Esther, we're gonna have to wrap this up because I'm almost out of battery. Oh my god, you guys are freaking jinking all over the place here! All right, but there is still one glaring indication that Camille was innocent. When I licked and sniffed that bloody towel from the sauna, I was able to quickly identify through genetic and hormonal anomalies that that blood was not that of a pig, but of a bird! Not to mention she called a hexagram a pentagram. Maybe we could just chalk it up to her being a complete dumbass or some poor imitation of the demonic apostle, except the species of bird that was used on the symbol. A seagull. Now, where would Camille have found a seagull when she's thousands of miles from the nearest beach? Beach? Wait. Which leads me to the real culprit. No. Keith Swanson. And I would have gotten away with it, too, if it wasn't for this beautiful group of people. Hey, just wait. It, it wasn't what it looked like. Not what it looks like. Okay, then what was it? Explain.
Give it to me, please! I'm sorry. Shut up! You're so sorry now. Just wait until everyone knows your little secret. And I thought we were actually... I should have known! I should have known better than to be friends with a liar, because that's all you are, Sammy Reese. You're a liar! And I think everyone should know that you stole Kevin's music! The kid loves you! He loves you! And you set him running! What kind of a person does that? Right here! Right here in this driveway. Oh, hi! I'm Kevin Bushwell. Bam! I get hit by a car. Now it's over for me. And you did it! I don't think we should be feeding that ox any of that grass, because it's been making me real sick when I eat it. Oops. You ate all of our grass reserve? I don't know. Oh, uh, you just said that you did. Why would you do that? I don't know. You better stop saying you don't know. Mom, I'm serious. Don't look too deep here for a reason why I do anything, because I don't know. I mean, asking me, a seven-year-old child, why I ate all that grass, it's like asking me why I throw the supplies off the back of the wagon when I'm bored. <laughs> Is it to watch how stuff bounces? I mean, I can't say for sure because I don't know, but, you know, I'm a kid. I basically know nothing. I'm experiencing a lot of things for the first time, and I have to figure them out through trial and error. And putting them in my mouth. <laughs> Good Lord, what else have you eaten? I've literally eaten everything that I've come across. Uh, when I interact with a new object, I'm going to look at it for a little bit. I'm going to reach out, poke it, see if it moves around. I'll pick it up, wiggle it back and forth. And then that thing goes all the way in my mouth. And if it doesn't try to get out of my mouth, it's going down the hatch. If you ask me, it's a pretty good way to do things. The other day, I put a scorpion in my mouth. That guy jumped right out. I mean, he knew the rules. He played the game. I respect him for that. Maybe that grass should have done the same. Oh, good Lord. Not only was that grass for the ox, but we had to eat it, too, while we were crossing the desert. Now what are we going to do? God, guys, I don't know. I mean, maybe we should just take off all our clothes and find a lake and jump in it. <laughs> oh, that is so stupid. You are going to go get us more food, young man. You are going hunting. Uh, okay. Uh, just explain to me what that is, though. Just start from the beginning. Assume I know nothing. Here. Figure it out. Uh, okay. No, no! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! <laughs>